friends, I'm Shreeman. In today's video, we're going to learn how can you find an inverse function of a modulus function. Yes, okay. So, let's take an example y is equal to modulus x minus 3. Now, first, before we go into inverse and all the stuff, we need to understand how we can convert this modulus function into a piecewise function that does not contain any modulus signs to confuse you. Okay? So, let's understand this. The first step we want to do, right, is make this part, the part inside the modulus, okay, inside the modulus, greater than or equal to zero. And you solve for it, okay? You solve for it. So if you solve x minus 3 is greater than or equal to zero, you get x greater than 3. So that means that when you convert this into a piecewise function, okay, piecewise function is just Distributing in parts, okay? No, nothing to be afraid. Let's nope. me, guys. X minus 3 if x is greater than 3. Correct? So, if x is greater than 3, if x is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, the modulus function still holds, okay? If it is 4, if it is 5, if it is 6, this thing here, it's still positive or equal to 0. However, it cannot be 2 or 1 or 0 because this thing would then be negative, correct? So, what do you do? The easy way is just flip everything. 3 minus x, x smaller than 3. That's it. This is the only step that's important, and this one is just a flip. A pretty interesting acronym or way to remember it, okay? So taking note of that, coming to back to this graph, coming back to the idea of inverse functions. What is the main condition for this function to have an inverse function in the first place? Think about it guys. I think you guys know it. I'm giving you a clue. 1-1. One, one. This thing has to be a 1-1 one, one function. Now, what is a 1-1 one, one function? I guess a lot of people do know about it. Just a very short recap. 1x value must give you 1y value. The focus is only 1x value. 1x value maps to 1y value. Not 2x values map to 1y value. That is not allowed in a 1-1 one, one function. And a very important small recap, okay? Say you have a graph, okay? It goes like this. If a horizontal line, if you draw a horizontal line on any point of the graph, this should cut at only one point of the graph. It cuts at this point, only one. If it fulfills the condition, it is one one. And if it is a one one function, it has an inverse function, okay? So guys, if you were to just use this modular sign and try to work out this inverse, it won't work because this one, domain is x element of r. So the graph is technically something like this. It's not 1, 1, correct? So either the question gives you the domain, which is either this one or this one, or they ask you to find it yourself, or they give you the freedom of choice to choose which part, the, which left part or the right part to choose for your question. So, if they give you, say, x should be smaller than 3, they define the function like that, then you take this one. So you solve it as fx, say, say fx is equal to 3 minus x for x smaller than 3. And then you just solve it. Replace y is equal to 3 minus x, okay? Switch the places. So f inverse x is equal to 3 minus x. What is the domain of an inverse function? It's the range of the original function. Okay, but I don't want to go too deep into that. My main focus is about choosing the piecewise. Which one should you choose? Now let's go to a more difficult example. Okay, let's think of a tougher example. Y is equal to square root. Nope. Not only that, modulus x squared minus 2. Oh my god. Okay. This is already kind of overwhelming, but just use the same step. What you need to do, just apply this. Make the part inside the modulus greater or equal to zero. Solve for that. X square minus two greater than equal to zero. This one is very simple, right? A square minus B square. So you'll get X plus root two, X minus root two is greater than equal to zero. Then you use this, what do you call this? This, this weird thing and say this is minus root 2, this is positive root 2, and then you choose this part and this part to x, or 
x greater than equal to root 2. So how do you actually define the piecewise function? Let's see, right? That's the first step. What does x square minus 2 is equal to? Okay, x square minus 2, just copy over. x is smaller than or equal to minus root 2 or x is greater than root 2. Okay, now flip. Flip it. In this case, it will be in between. This, this part. It will be this part. Let's carry over right here. You will get minus root 2 x root 2 okay now the thing that you should be really really careful is this is an x square graph you know it has a u shape so right you can't use both domains so in the question if they give you the domain of this function x square minus 2 is right x smaller than minus root 2 x greater than root 2 this is not a one one function it has to be either this one or this one or else the graph would cut this twice and it won't be one one so if they say in the question okay let's remove only this we only have this one it's easy to solve right you have x square minus 2 you bring the square root over and you can solve it y square is equal to x square minus 2 x square is y square plus 2 x is equal to square root of y square plus 2 now at this part, right, do you need a plus minus sign? Is a plus minus sign necessary? You must choose either this or this. You must choose. Now what do I mean by that? So if they say this one, right, this one is the negative one. So you use the negative sign. If they give you the positive one as the domain, then you use the positive sign. So you need to be very careful about this plus minus thing. You should choose one, okay? So that's it guys. I hope this video really helped you in understanding how you can find the inverse of a modulus function and how to recap the, a very complicated part of function. So be sure to share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel. I will feel really grateful for that. And I'll see you in my next episode of Revision with KJ Streamer. This is Streamer signing off. Bye. <laughs>